Welcome to the Boss Hijabipreneur podcast for women of faith and business looking to take their careers or businesses to the next level without compromising their faith. If you're ready to begin taking action on your entrepreneurship goals, learn tips, tools, and strategies to execute consistently and manifest the life of your dreams, this podcast is for you. I'm your host, Halima de Oliveira, business strategist, three-time author, using the fusion of faith and finances to lead female-led e-commerce brands to six- and seven-figure revenue targets annually. Ready? Let's work. Tune in to today's episode, Already in Progress. Welcome back to the Boss Hijabipreneur podcast. This is episode 71, Five Ways to Choose Faith over fear. So we have a few more episodes before the end of season five, inshallah. I cannot believe that I've been doing this um, for six years, but these last few episodes we've recorded um, prior, but I really thought that they were necessary to be included in season five. I could have included them in season six because they match there too, but I wanted to end the season with those particular topics. So stay tuned for those episodes in the um, upcoming weeks. So today's episode, how can you choose faith over fear? Some people say that it's easier easier said than done. And I say, feel the fear and do it anyway. Um, This podcast is proof of that. This podcast is proof of me, you know, feeling the fear, not necessarily knowing how to use the technology, not necessarily knowing what I was going to talk about, if people were going to, you know, understand what I was talking about, if this was even going to um, catch on. The only thing that I knew is that I had information to share with women who, like me, were unfulfilled in their work and wanted to do something about it. But they needed help, they needed resources, they needed information, and so here we are, six years later. When you have tawakkul, which is trust in God's plan, you operate with yaqeen, which is certainty. The more you know God and the reason for your creation, it's a lot easier to move with that sense of certainty to make more firm decisions. You operate knowing that no matter the outcome, it's what's best for you. And this is something that me personally, I've had to grow into many of the women that I speak to to, that are on their business journey that they themselves have to go through is having that complete trust that no matter what's happening, no matter what's going on, that um, at the end, they're going to have the best outcome. So here are five ways to choose faith over fear. One, get to know God. Open up your book of choice. In my case, it's the Quran. Open it and reflect on the words. How can you apply what is written to your life, to your business? Is this an area where you are courageous or fearful? If it's an area where you're courageous, keep building. If it's an area where it's an area of opportunity, it's an, it's an area where you're fearful, work on that area. Maybe you don't trust yourself to make sound decisions in a spouse, a friendship, or partnership. Write down what you want. And that's, that's something that we have to do as women. We have to start writing down what we want. Sometimes it's hard for us to articulate the feelings that we have. The, the emotions are, are gushing and, and, and rushing through and we, we don't necessarily have the words or can't find the words. Writing, I know, helps me and many women find journaling and writing things down helpful. So play into that. Play into who you are and start to write those um, things down. What you want in a friendship, what you want in a spouse, what you want in a business partnership, what you want in an employee if you are a business owner. That I work on a lot with my clients because sometimes and they have it in their head what they want, but they haven't written it down to be able to see it. And and when you write it down and, and you see it, when that person comes up, when that person says something out of your mouth, it automatically takes you back to that list that you wrote. Okay, this, this is a check mark. That person has this particular quality that I'm looking for in that new employee, that I'm looking for in a spouse, that I'm looking for in a partnership, that I'm looking for in a friendship, all right? And, you know, write down what you want, enlist the help of family, friends, the people that know you the best um, to be there when you're having those sit downs and those business meetings or a brunch and talk with them about how you feel about the prospective spouse, friend or business partner. They can help you by having a dialogue around any red flags that are being raised. All right, et cetera. Right. Two. 
The second is belief in oneself. So that second way to choose faith over fear is to simply believe in yourself. God has blessed you with everything you need in every single moment. He wouldn't call you to be in a room or situation he wasn't prepared to see you through. If you're there, be there fully, be present. I remember going on a retreat to Mexico and uh, the name of the uh, yoga studio that was um, near the um, villa where we stayed was called Present Moments. And one of the things that they talked about was being present in every single moment. And by being present in that moment, you're able to take everything in. You're able to take the good of a situation, the bad, the indifferent, whatever it is, you're able to take all of it in. And then you're able to categorize it um later you're able to say you know what this i like this that can leave and that can stay over there and that will help you to choose faith over fear that will help you to build trust right so trust your instincts and do and if you fail it doesn't mean you weren't supposed to be there it means you learned the lesson and your faith muscle is being strengthened believe you are the perfect one for an opportunity and you will be no matter the outcome whether that's a marriage whether that's a friendship whether that's a business partnership, even if it dissolves, even if the relationship dissolves, you were supposed to be there. You were supposed to go through that particular circumstance or situation. And there was something you were supposed to learn from it. You were supposed to grow, evolve, et cetera, from that particular situation. So I talk about this in my book, Not Without My Hijab, Love What Comes. It's one of the chapters. Love what comes, no matter what it is. Love what comes as if you had chosen it for yourself. Because the best of planners, a lot, God, right? He is the one that chose that particular circumstance or situation for you. Three, deal with your baggage. Sis, this is the year. This is the month. This is the time that you're going to deal with your baggage. And all of us have it. It doesn't make us bad people. It just makes us people that have baggage and we need to deal with it. If we want to move to the next level of our business, if we want to move to the next level of our relationships, we need to take care of our baggage. I actually watch a really cute video about, you know, a couple that's preparing to get married and they've known each other for a year and, you know, they, they've been together. And one of the things that she said is she thanked him for showing her how to love better and showing her that she doesn't have to be the angry, you know, so-called, uh, you know, black woman in every single circumstance and that she doesn't have to do everything herself, that she has a man that's there, that's going, that has her back and, and has her best interests at heart and being able to trust that. And part of that is dealing with our um, baggage. I thought it was so moving and beautiful. Sometimes the only way to move forward is to deal with the Achilles heel, the thing or things that are holding you back. Did you just get out of a relationship? Don't go immediately into a new one. Take some time to heal. Take some time to reflect on what you did well and what areas of opportunity you have to do better for the next relationship. By dealing with your baggage, you won't have the fear that you will repeat the same missteps in a new relationship. And sometimes we have our guard up and we have our guard up because we haven't healed. We haven't addressed um, certain things. And so it's like the thing that didn't work in that particular relationship, instead of us letting it go and attributing it to that relationship or the relationship just not working out or the chemistry of the two people in the relationship not working out, we attribute it to relationships as a whole. And then we put our our guard up and we say to ourselves okay that's it you know I'm either never gonna be in a relationship or um, when I see that type of thing happening that's it my guard is up and I'm you know never listening to the person again etc 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 right you will go into the new relationship with more faith in yourself and the outcome of the relationship that confidence will add positively to the new relationship and to put it out there frankly you're less likely to bleed all over someone who didn't cut you. And it just goes back to what I just said a moment ago is, you know, putting that guard down and trusting and trusting yourself, trusting, you know, the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, you know, this is the person for you and going into each uh, relationship new and going into a friendship, a partnership new and not necessarily with that baggage from the previous um, relationship. And another thing that you could do is you could be up front and you 
could say, hey, this is something that has happened to me um, in the past where, you know, um, and, you know, it's a, it's a red flag for me. It's something that I don't want to have happen in the new relationship. So just letting you know that this is something that, you know, um, is a trigger for me and, you know, it could make or break, break the relationship or it's an area where we may have to, um, you know, spend our time focusing on, um, you know, growing in that um, particular um, area. Number four, choose to come out of hiding. And as women of faith, as uh, women who cover, and I feel like this happens for women of cover, uh, of uh, who cover, because it's easy for us to cover, right? So to find that uh, cover. And so let me explain this a little bit. We use the way we dress as an excuse as to what we can't or don't have you know, or why we don't have certain achievements, right? So why we can't go after certain achievements or why we don't have certain achievements. And here's what I'm going to say. As long as you're not going against the tenets of your faith, the way you dress, your values and beliefs are not what are holding you back. I'm going to say that again. As long as you're not going against the tenets of your faith, the way you dress, your values or beliefs are not what are holding you back you are holding you back. Choose to come out of hiding. You may be hiding because you're afraid of judgment. You're afraid of people finding out the real you. And the real you could be angry. The real you could get upset at things. The real you could do, you know, have all of these, you know, quirks to you, right? That may not necessarily be seen as, you know, appealing um, to other people, right? We're all on a journey. We're all on a journey from a place to a place and in between um, we, we figure things out and, we, and, and we, we work to become better people, right? So none of us are perfect. So you don't have to be afraid of judgment and people finding out the real you, right? The people who love you will love you as you are, right? The people who love you will love you as you are. Finding out you have goals, so some people may judge you because they find out you have goals, dreams, and ambitions. How dare you want to get out the hood? How dare you want to better your finances so you're not living paycheck to paycheck? We've always done it this way. Some people may say, hey, sis, we've always done it this way. This is this is how people where we're from. This is this is how they get through life. Right. And we're only supposed to have this little bit more than 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 what we've had before. How dare you dream outside of that little bit that we're supposed to get? How dare you leave our circle of friends? If you do that, then we won't be able to hang out anymore. I hear this a lot. And this may be the number one reason women in business fail. Just being honest. They don't want to leave their friends behind. Here's a food for thought. Why don't we adopt this mindset instead? When we see someone else doing better or working on doing better, why don't we join them? Why don't we level up ourselves? We have to get get the we have to reverse the group think mentality. If one is trying to get out, so to speak, right? Let's figure out how we can all get out instead of the crabs in the barrel. Oh, that person is trying to get out. Let me pull that person back because we all going to be here together or, or, or it, it, it's, it, it's not going to work, right? One person can't get out. One crab can't get out if, all, if the rest of us are not getting out, right? Not realizing that that one crab that gets out may have a ladder, may be able to throw a rope down and help everyone else out and insert the Harriet Tubman reference here, right? where she was, she got herself free and then she came back to get other people. But I'm sure there were some crabs in the barrel during her time, like, hey, how dare she? Oh, let me go and tell Massa that, you know, Harriet Tubman is trying to escape because, you know, if she, she, who, who does she think she is trying to get free? Harriet Tubman always knew she, would, she, would, she needed to know the way herself so that she can help the rest of her people out, right? Number five. Choose to pray your way out of the fear rather than feeling only fear. When you worry, you suffer twice. When you're fearful, you suffer twice. And you allow the fear to paralyze you. You rob yourself of knowing if that thing could have worked out. 
So when you, you, you let the fear overtake you and you let it, you know, you, you let it say, okay, well, I'm not going to do that thing because, you know, I'm too afraid or, you know, what if this happens? What if this happens? What if this happens? Guess what? Our next moment is not even promised. Our next day is not even promised. Next month, next year, none of it is promised. And we could what if things to death. We really and truly could what if things to death. We really could. But I'm asking you not to. Prayer is not just thinking it or saying it. It's writing it down and then moving towards it. That's faith. It's not knowing the outcome, being afraid, but knowing with certainty. Here comes that yaqeen again, right? That God controls the outcome. And with him in control, the outcome is going to be what's best for me, no matter what the outcome is. I pray that this is helpful. And I wanted to keep this short and sweet so that you could listen to it on your lunch break and make sure that you share, share it with another bossy jabbypreneur or your business bestie. My inspirational quote of the week, we said, descend all of you. Then when guidance comes to you from me, whoever follows it, there will be no fear for them, nor will they grieve. And that's from Surah Baqarah, verse 38. This episode was brought to you by the Boss Hijabi Society. Boss Hijabi Society is an online and in-person community for professional Muslim women. Boss Hijabi Society uses a multidisciplinary approach to help heart, to help like-hearted women reconnect their spiritual foundations to other aspects of their lives, begin healing by being proactive about their wellness, and grow financially. Their monthly programs centered around the aforementioned areas are designed to increase each member's confidence in those areas and lead them to living out productive and successful lives. So visit bosshijabisociety.com to learn more. This has been another spectacular episode of Boss Hijabipreneur brought to you by BUNHD LLC and the Not Without My Hijab stage play. To find out more about services for women of faith and business and the next city up on the tour, visit www.bunhd.com. It is our hope here at BUNHD that after each episode, you will be empowered to have a deeper connection in your spirituality, personal, and business relationships. As women of faith, we have a responsibility to learn our religion, apply it to our daily lives, and to make a positive contribution in our local and global communities.